craft brewers love to draw their inspiration from the places they call home. And that's true in the small town of Auburn, where a new brew pub has taken its cue from an unexpected source. If you're doing a little time here, please be sure to check out Prison City Brewing. You may not think the big house and beer naturally go together, but brew pub founder Don Schultz and husband Mark wanted to pay homage to the city's most prominent feature. Don is one of the small but growing number of female brew pub owners across the state, and she invited me to discuss how she broke in to the business. First of all, this is the first time I've been to Auburn. It is absolutely beautiful. What drew you here? and to open a business here. When I was leaving high school, I swore I was never coming back. But after college and then being away for 15 years and starting a family, I wanted to move back to the area because my family is here. I love Auburn. The community is amazing. The lakes are gorgeous. And it just seems like home to be back here. I always have had a passion for craft beer, so it seemed like the right time and the right fit to open a brew pub. And why the name? Auburn has the nickname Prison City. It is the home of Auburn Correctional Facility, which is a federal prison, which is kind of famous. It was the first electric chair. So there's some neat history behind the prison itself. And uh, we just thought it fit. A lot of the photos on the wall are historic photos of the prison. I love that. We hired a design firm, and uh, they came up with the logo, which is a lock with a Pilsner glass inside of it. It's clear that Prison City takes its theme seriously, albeit a little tongue-in-cheek, right down to the names of the beers. Don's husband, Mark, in addition to being co-owner, is also known as the name guy. <laughs> I am the name guy. I think beer is meant to be fun. It is art, and it should be handcrafted, but it should be fun. So coming up with names like Cool Hand Cuke, a lot of movie references. We're just always looking for things, and especially if it piques somebody's interest, like they're like, aha, I know why you named that beer, and it gets people engaged and creates a conversation. Don and Mark have even put their own prison-themed spin on a popular brew pub activity. I can see behind me here, we have some mug shots. I assume that's not from the prison. <laughs> not that I know of. Some of them might have other mug shots. Most breweries tend to do a mug club where it's discounted pints or things like that, but being prison themed, we have a mugshot wall, so everybody gets their picture taken. We try to do different tastings each month, whether they be blind tastings, beer trivia. My husband will come in and teach people about different hops or different yeast, different styles of beer. That's actually one of the reasons that I love the brew pub model, because I feel like we're the front line to introducing people to craft beer, and uh, it's been fun. And that combination of fun and serious craft extends across the business. It's what attracted brewer Ben Maeso to Prison City. Ben doesn't lock himself into a particular style of brewing. I started out as being a traditional brewer uh, in terms of the types of beer I made. And then as soon as I kind of figured that all out, I enjoyed to be challenged. I like to make uh, lagers. I enjoy making wild beers, sour ales, you know, really Especially sour beers tend to be very unpredictable. Working with Dawn's been great. She's uh, she pretty much gives me carte blanche as far as the brewery goes, which is amazing because I don't have any restraints. I can do whatever I want. I can put cereal in beer. I can put weird fruits and different ingredients in beer. We produce just about 250 barrels a year, which is really small in the grand scheme of things. But on the other hand, it's great because we get to experiment a lot with all these small batches. We get to have a lot of fun. If we were in a big production brewery, uh, we'd probably have to make the same four flagship beers uh, all the time. So we enjoy the fact that it's small and I get to keep being creative in my process. We have one beer called Puff Puff Shiv, which is a English style brown ale made with actual Cocoa Puff cereal. So cleaned out a couple stores of all their Cocoa Puffs, added it to the beer, really didn't know what was gonna happen. I ended up tasting and smelling exactly like Cocoa Puffs and everybody loved it, especially those that love chocolate, those that love dark beers. I originally didn't think that I would ever hire a home brewer, but he was voted New York State Home Brewer of the Year. He has hundreds of awards. I came up for my interview and I brought uh, 10 of my best uh, home brews, brought my own glassware. I think having the right glasses is crucial uh, to the beer. A lot of uh, bars serve out of those old shaker pints, and it's probably one of the worst things you can drink out of. I'm a glass geek in addition to being a beer geek. Before the end of the interview, I already knew it was going to happen. I knew he was the guy. It was a great fit. Being a female pub owner, are you in a unique club? And if you are, do you consider yourself a trailblazer? <laughs> 
I think that there are trailblazers that have come before me, but I certainly do think that we're a minority in the business. I am a member of the Pink Boots Society, who has probably blazed the trail. They've been around for quite a while, and it is a women's organization that is set up to try to introduce women's craft beer, and they do a lot of education and scholarships for women to get into the brewing industry. Girls Pine Out is a group of women that I've put together in the Auburn area to try to create a craft beer community for women. I would love to know if you have any advice for anybody, but women in particular, for starting a brew pub business. Oh, as a woman, I would say, just go for it. I sat on a panel of women in the industry one time, and, and one of the big things that came out of it is women were intimidated to be able to speak about beer because they felt that they didn't know enough. And my advice is, you really do. If you're drinking it, you're already halfway there. But really, in general, the craft beer community is all embracing, and I've had great relationships with men and women. This community wants to help you. Don't be afraid to ask questions.